So let's assume that we use slotted pages to store fixed size components and those components are tuples. So the situation we look at is something like that. We have our relation called photos and it has three attributes. The first is a primary key which is an ID of four bytes and in four. Then there's an attribute camera which is another in four and there's a label char eight data type. So this means we have 4 plus 4 plus 8, which is 16 bytes for each tuple to store. Each and every tuple has the same size, that is 16 bytes. In a situation like that, you actually don't need this directory pointing to the different offsets. You can replace this directory by a function, simply by using linear addressing. So how does that work? So we need a function that's called offset and here we put in the logical slot ID. So this function is defined as follows. We have here 4k which is a page size in this case and then we subtract 16 times the slot ID plus 1. So if the slot ID happens to be 0, so the first slot we subtract 16 and then we end up at this position. That is where we start writing the data. That is where this tuple with a slot ID 0 is stored. If we have slot ID 2, let's say, then we have 2 plus 1, 3 times 16 is being subtracted, so we end up at this position. That is where this tuple number 2 is stored. So in this case, no need to keep a directory. We simply replace the directory we had before. Let's go back. Here, this was a physical directory, some sort of array pointing to the different positions. We replace this data structure by a function. And of course, this has the advantage that we can store more data as no space is required to store a directory here. So this works very well if the stuff we store has a fixed size. So all tuples have the same size, 16 bytes, and that's why we can replace the directory by a function. And then the tuples inside, of course, have a format like that for the three attributes that look something like that here. 42, 43, and then Dietrich, 11, 23. And then the string where internally, of course, you fill that up with some blank spaces. As, you, as you're not exploiting all of the eight characters, you still, you still use eight characters. Eight characters are reserved for that, even though you're just storing five in this particular example. So what happens if we do not have fixed size data types, but variable length data types? Then we have to do variable sized addressing. And this implies that we still need some sort of directory, but the directory will not sit here as in the previous example. The directory is now integrated with the actual tuples. So what does that mean? So assume we have a schema like that. So that is the schema we're looking at now. And the only thing I changed is this one. I said, okay, it's not a character eight anymore. It's a varchar. It may be of any length. So I cannot say that all tuples have a size of 16 bytes. They may have any size actually. So what I do internally inside the page to represent that data is I change the schema to something like this. I say label is translated into two artificial attributes. That is the label size. Say how many characters follow and then the actual offset where the characters are stored. And with that, I need two plus two bytes for those artificial attributes. But again, those two artificial attributes are of fixed size, which means this internal schema I'm using is of fixed size and can be stored using a linear function again. I have four plus four plus two plus two, which is 12 bytes, and this is the same case as above. Let's go back. So again, I can use linear addressing to store this schema. The only problem here is are those characters, the actual varchars. And those varchars can be stored at the beginning of the page. So the tuples look like this. So we have 
the fixed size components, the ID and the camera. So we have here, the first is the label size, which is actually eight. It should be eight, not 11. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight characters. And then the offset where that bar char starts. And here again, it's the size five, one, two, three, four, five, and the offset where that bar char starts inside that page, of course. And by that, I'm kind of flipping roles here. So before I had a directory that was pointing to the region here. Now I have the tuple, the, the fixed size data and the directory integrated. So this is now pointing to stuff here. But by doing it in this way, I can make optimal use of the space available on that page. And I have similar properties as before. I can move around all the variable sized components if for whatever reason I make a decision to store it in a different place. That's all fine. I don't have to change anything to the outside world. To the outside world, I still have those logical addresses. It's always page, number, comma, slot ID where the actual variable size components sit on the page, I don't have to expose that to the outside world. Growth it has a similar effect as in standard slotted pages that have a directory here. The page is not a two-dimensional structure, it's a one-dimensional structure. You start writing like this over the page from left to right. That is how the variable size components are stored and the fixed size components plus this pointer plus this directory to the variable size component starts from bottom to top, from right to left. So that is how you store the fixed size components plus pointers. If you liked this video, don't forget to hit the like button. Thank you. So if you want to see more database videos, be it in English or in German, take a look at my website datenbankenlernen.de. It has a couple of English and German videos. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel, Jens Dit, or you look at our website, infosys.uni-saarland.de. See you there.